I'm really worried about this diversion. I mean, as you say, the government bond market is 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 way down, and price is down. Of course, the yield is up and, and, and pushing on three percent, as you mentioned. Uh, but there's also other markets. I mean, you look at the uh, LQD, which is the uh, the um, investment grade uh, corporate bond index. High yield. It's yep. Well, it's March lows, uh, and the same thing with the high yield market in particular. Uh, you know, we see that uh, you know uh, uh, testing its March lows, and in credit spreads widening out to their widest levels since March, and yet the stock market is nowhere near its its March lows. And when you get that kind of divergence, uh, you know, as we've all heard many many times, the bond market when there's a divergence, the bond market's the one is usually right, and uh, at some point, I think the the stock market's going to have to come down a little bit. Well, you know, usually stocks fall, bonds go up. People get nervous. They sell stocks. Maybe they put money in government bonds. They don't like the returns, but they're just kind of parking cash. I guess my question now is, Matt, with government bonds down, corporate bonds down, high yield bonds down, and stock markets mostly outside of energy and a few others down, where's the money going? Well, one of the things that people uh, that, that we, we always hear, and we hear some people saying that, hey, geez, you know, these, this bond market is going to fall further, and uh, that's actually good for the stock market. I, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, the, the, one of the biggest concerns that I have in this marketplace, and we've seen it, uh, and people have been talking about it for a year now, is the huge amount of leverage in, in the market. We sort of margin debt at all, all time highs, well above what they were going into the, uh, you know, the, the financial crisis a, a dozen years ago. And the thing is, when you have that much leverage in, in the marketplace, and there's plenty of it in the bond market, when the market starts to sell off, that leverage is unwind. Well, the people take the money. They say, oh, the money, people are going to sell those bonds, take the money and buy stocks. And I'm like, actually, what they're going to do is they're going to take the money and pay their margin calls. They're not going to have any proceeds to, uh, to, to buy yeah. stocks with. So you need to be very, very careful about that. Or, they're, or, by the way, pay their taxes. You wonder with tax season and all the gains we've had the last few years, if there are some giant tax bills that are coming. Matt, do you think the money's going to continue to flow into energy stocks? Because uh, energy stocks have been booming. In fact, there's like a 50 or 60 percent outperformance between energy and big cap tech. It's like people sold NVIDIA and bought Hess. I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but you get my point there. But, man, it's almost like they've come up so far so fast, you wonder how much is left even in energy. Well, I mean, that is a concern on a short, more on a short-term basis. But you still know, on, on, as, as, as a percentage of the, uh, the S&P, it's still very, very low. And to a certain degree, in the institutional side of things, uh, the group is not over-owned by any stretch of the imagination. Nowhere near as under-owned as it was a year ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, but so I still think it's got room to, to, to go. However, we do need to be careful here. The uh, you know I sent out a note uh, two days ago, late in the, in the afternoon, saying that uh, Nat Gas has gotten ridiculously overbought on a short-term basis. It's come down a little bit in the last you know, day and a half. I think it's got further to fall. But I do think, uh, so people need to be careful about chasing these names. But I do think that yep. uh, you know, they want to climb on weakness because I think they'll do fine on the longer term. Love your tech. Quickly, 20 seconds. Technical analysis. Next key important level on the S&P 500 is... 4,600. If we can break above 4,600, some of my concerns will be pushed to the side. We've been kind of stuck in a sideways range here for the last six or seven trading days. If we can break above 4,600, that's going to be bullish. And if we break below uh, the recent lows, uh, that's going to create some problems.